Did you see how they yapped us on CNN? Let me remove this my glasses, Maso. I'm telling you. We're sitting there, gradually, we collected stray bullets. Ah, Nigeria in the same status with Venezuela. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Nigeria has got into that place. Where when they are talking about things, when they are mentioning things that are bad, we are the ones who used to do example. A country that has la uh, no rule of law, now we, they tell they do example. Ah, Nigeria. This is where we are. This is where we found ourselves. For how long are we going to remain like this? For how long are we going to allow the worst of us to be the ones to continue, you know, to govern us, to destroy our country, our image? Anywhere we go, we are looked upon. We are looked upon as if we are second-class citizens. Our passport is treated anyhow. No respect. It's one of the worst around the world. Anyway, listen to this. What you could have done with these hundreds of millions of dollars, and again, I believe you play by the rules. Trump does not. We have lots of evidence that he does not. This is bad for the marketplace. It is bad for other borrowers. It's frankly bad for the shareholders of these banks who didn't, didn't benefit from this. Maybe the bankers who helped him out with this fraud got a little fatter bonus, but the shareholders were not benefiting from this. The idea that it is good for the business environment, good for America to not enforce laws against fraud is just bizarre. It, that, that is how it works in Venezuela and in Nigeria and in lots of other places where they do not have rule of law and where there is not counterparty trust in business. Oh my you... goodness. Did you see that? Oh my goodness. It's Nigeria that they are using to do that kind of example. Eh? Um... No be small thing, no. Ha! Ah, you know, a few a few months ago, uh, Mr. Peter Obi was discussing uh, this thing. What was it called now? You know, in, in a space, in, in citizens engagement, and there was a question about uh, GDP, and he talked about one of the factors that help with a country's GDP is the rule of law. Ah! No insult that they didn't insult Mr. Peter Obi that day. Ah, yeah, he doesn't know anything. I'm only a trader. This is easy, blah, 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 blah. You know, one of the things I find, you know, there's something that they call passionate, when somebody is passionately ignorant, passionate ignorance. Like, you, you just say, so you think you know everything, and then you go off. So this guy came up and did all of, by the time they started schooling him and showing him the relationship between rule of law and GDP, I hope he learned. Maybe if you didn't let it like, me, I learned it a lot because I was now reading all the things that people were putting through. One of the things about life is that always humble yourself. When you feel something that you don't, don't assume that you know the answer. Because for me, one of the things that humble me in life is how much, how ignorant I am. How many, how much, how much of knowledge I know nothing about. How, how much, there are so many things. So when I see something, when Google is your friend, go and Google it. Check it, there are some things that you see somebody, you say, ah, you want to reply, but then by the time you Google it, you are like, wow, this is actually true. They were talking about that rule of thumb. They say it, it doesn't matter. Who do you think is going to bring their business to a place where there's no rule of law? And then you'll be sitting down one day. The government will say that they've collabed all your money. They've taken over all your business and whatever, nationalize it or do whatever with it. And then you can't even go to the court because there's no court. Court is in the, in the pocket of you. That's what rule of law does. So when anybody is coming to engage business with you, when anybody is going to do something, uh, uh, with you, they're going to be thinking of those things, and those are the factors. You know, when you're doing, they're doing their SWOT and analysis, the strength, weakness, opportunity, threat analysis. These are the things that they're going to be putting in place. And so, most people would not want a situation whereby they are going to be dependent on the court that is not there. So when something happens, their whole money, their everything will go away. So these are things that affect, you know, the rule of law. There are a lot of business uh, companies also that cannot come to Nigeria and do business. Because here in Nigeria, the situation whereby before you are able to do business or anything, you must be able to bribe someone somewhere, somehow or whatever. Not many people want to do that. Not many people want to partake in such kind of a thing. And so they will stay away. Because even if they, they, they can't, for example, like if you're a country, if you're a company of United States of America and you go to another country and go and give bribe in another country, they, they'll prosecute you in America. It doesn't matter whether, oh, that's how they are doing it. 
as long as that's it so any com a company from such countries they would not even want in any way whatsoever to be associated with any kind of corruption within this uh, 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 area, uh, within these areas. And so you can imagine what that does. And for us to be sitting down on, on such a, a public uh, forum, uh, international media, CNN everywhere, and here Nigeria being called in such a way, you know what it is. Even you, your, if you travel out, your people are looking at you, your colleagues are looking at you, at the airport, they are checking you extra because they know that it's a place where anything goes. There's no rule, rule of law. Things do things, people do things anyhow. And so, absolutely, it affects you uh, as a person. And most people don't seem to understand this or they don't want to get it. See where we are. And then with the whole issue again of where we are today, where we have somebody who has been found to be involved in, in drug uh, dealing, in forgery, is a person who has illegally is installed himself in the, in, in the office. It, it says everything about, uh, you know, the way Nigeria will be looked upon. And so you're working as a Nigeria, you're working hard, you're doing the right thing, you're obeying the law, but you're being looked upon as a criminal because one, the way your country, uh, your country is. Another thing right now, the kind of person that you have that is supposed to be the president, you know, that's what the world is, they, they're looking at, uh, rigging his way into office. And that's why for me, I find it so hypocritical of, uh, you know, uh, some of these Western countries that will sort of like see this kind of a thing and they accept it. They, 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 they will congratulate the election, the person who rigged his way into office and everything. What's the difference between uh, what uh, Bola Metinibu did and what uh, Putin uh, uh, has also done? And you okay on one hand you say that oh you you do not accept the election of uh, that brought in Putin on another hand you are accepting the election that brought in Tinubu people's people's right to, to vote and mandate have been oppressed people's mandates were not allowed to uh, come to that's not the true reflection of both on both cases not the true reflection of what the people want but yet you're quick to accept one and quick quick to not accept one that's all hypocrisy we should have a uniform standard of what we want free fair credible election to be so that at any time we are using these measures, not measures that suit our narratives or measures that, you know, uh, we are, we are, that we are going to benefit us in, in one way uh, or the other. It's really sad where we are here at, in Nigeria right now. And for me, I'll always continue to say one thing, and that a particular thing that I say all the time is that politics must matter. We must all participate in politics. We must not sit down and say that, oh, uh, and it's none of our business and this, our politics is dirty. Yes, let's roll up our sleeves and get in there and clean it. There is no nation that is built by people just folding their hands. People had to put in there, put in the hard work and put in the hard work to get a country that works for every one of them. And those are the things that we all uh, should be doing to ensure that we have the Nigeria that works for us, the Nigeria that nobody is going to go on any media, whether be it local, national, international, to castigate Nigeria or put, bring our name in when anything that it's not uh, good is being discussed. Thank you so much for listening and watching. But please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Thank you. Bye.